It's a British invasion. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we're gonna to be reviewing these Tarantula Room European style tarantula or invertebrate enclosures. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'll make videos about tarantulas, scorpions, and other invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on all notifications so you're alerted every time I upload new content. I'm very excited to show you all these new enclosures I received in the mail a few weeks back. Now this is not a sponsored video. Tarantula Rooms is not paying me to make this video. But they did send these enclosures to me at no cost and asked that I do an honest review. So good or bad, we're gonna dive deep into these enclosures. Now they sent me seven different enclosures. Four of them are this cylinder style and three of them are rectangular. And even though they're different sizes and shapes, they're all essentially made the same way. Now these enclosures are a little different than anything I've personally used before. They're designed a little bit different and made out of a different type of material than I'm used to. So we're gonna quickly go through the pros and cons with these enclosures. Now, first off, one of the pros is that they have magnetic locking lids. Now, as you can see, especially with these smaller enclosures, the magnets are pretty strong. It holds that on there fairly tightly. Though you can kind of see the magnets when you look at them along the side. Another pro is the type of mesh that they're using. It's not that thin screen mesh that you see in a lot of juvenile enclosures or on exoterra enclosures. This is a stamped metal, it's been coated, so it doesn't look like it's gonna rust and it would be very tough for a tarantula to chew through. Now the plastic is very clear, you can see through it nicely and the basin lids seem very sturdy. Everything seems sealed up nicely with uh, like some kind of silicone or glue. Now for the cons, First off, you can you can see this seam right here, which isn't the most aesthetically pleasing feature, but if you have it on the back of the enclosure, if, if this is the back and you're facing it on the sides and, and on the front, you're probably not even gonna notice it. Another con is the material that they're using. It's not the thick acrylic that you're used to in a lot of acrylic enclosures. This is some kind of thin plastic sheet. It's got a little bit of a give to it. You can really see it on these larger enclosures. You can, you can I mean, you can squeeze that pretty good. And when you squeeze it, the lid pops open. Now, as I mentioned, the magnets on these smaller enclosures work very well. You can see it, that really stays on there when it's upside down. But on these larger enclosures, you know, not so much. Now they use three magnets spaced equally around this enclosure. And for a tarantula that's small enough to fit into an enclosure this size, I really don't think there's any way it could push that up. And this is the largest enclosure they sent me and it also only has three magnets. When I compare them side by side, it's obvious this is a smaller magnet, but I think this size enclosure could probably do with like four or five or maybe even six magnets around the side. Cause that lid is just way too easy to pop off. Even though it's stuck on there magnetically, I think a large juvie or small adult tarantula could very easily push that open. So if you do use these for a large pokey or something like that, you may wanna consider adding additional magnets or somehow taping it up or something like that. Now they do look like they could stack. Uh, if you put one enclosure on top of the other, they seem to fit together very nicely. The drawback is even though these look like they fit together nicely, you're blocking up the only source of fresh air in the bottom enclosure when you put one on top of it. And a lot of species that we have in the hobby these days really seem to prefer cross ventilation. Now these enclosures only offer top ventilation, but the plastic around the sides does have some give and you probably could very easily drill or melt cross ventilation into the sides. Now that's about all I can tell you just by looking at them. I mean, this is the first time I've had these in my hands and just kind of giving you my first impressions. But I think to really see how they work, we're gonna have to set up some of these enclosures and maybe even move in a tarantula or scorpion into a couple of them and try them out. So let's do that right now. So what I'm gonna rehouse today are uh, two of my juvenile HMAX. I'm gonna put them in these larger cylinder style arboreal enclosures. They're not full grown, so I don't think they'll be strong enough to push these lids open. And I have a couple of scorpions I'm gonna put in these smaller terrestrial enclosures and one spiderling we're gonna put in one of these very small spiderling, kind of large spiderling, young juvenile style enclosures. So first we're going to rehouse my Afonopelma bicoloratum spiderling.
right, now up next, we're gonna do a scorpion. Now this one's a little hot. It's the Titius stigmuris. It's a Brazilian scorpion, and they do like to be kept kind of arboreally. So for this species, I'm gonna use this cylinder uh, arboreal enclosure, but I'm not gonna have branches all the way up to the top because I don't wanna risk that scorpion being able to escape, like push the lid up and, and get out. Because it, like I said, it, it's a pretty venomous scorpion. But for its size, I think this enclosure is gonna be more than large enough. So let's check it out. Now next, I'm gonna rehouse my Brazilian blue scorpion, and it's gonna go in this larger enclosure, uh, which is this square one. We're gonna try that out. Actually, you know what? It, I think it does like a little bit of arboreal space. So we're just gonna use this uh, larger one here. I think that'll work nicely. And finally, I've got two of these HMAX, the uh, Heteroscodra maculata. I'm gonna be doing a care and husbandry video on this species in the very near future, so be sure you keep an eye out for that. But for today, we'll be rehousing them in these arboreal cylinder enclosures. These enclosures may be a little big, but they'll grow quickly, and I won't have to rehouse them again until I put them in their adult enclosure. So overall, these are some pretty cool enclosures, especially if you're looking for something a little different than your basic rectangle acrylic enclosure or glass aquariums. Now these were only available in the UK or throughout Europe, but they are now available here in the United States as well. So if you wanna try out a tarantula room enclosure, I'll leave a link down below in the description to the arachnid shop who is currently selling these enclosures here in the US. 
Overall, these are not bad enclosures. I am a little concerned about the strength of the magnets on these lids for the larger enclosures, and the lack of side ventilation on this particular style of enclosure is a little disheartening. But as I said, it, it probably is pretty easy to put your own in if you really need that. Now I'll do an update video in maybe another three or six months and let you know how these enclosures are lasting. Making sure everything is staying glued together and the lids are working well and whether I'm having any issues with them or not. So I want to give a huge thank you to the Arachnid Shop and Tarantula Room Enclosures for sending some of these out here for me to review. It's always cool getting tarantula enclosures and trying out something a little different. So if you've used these enclosures before and have some experience or insight, make sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about them. Give me your pros and cons. Share your experience with everyone else watching these videos. I'd love to hear from you. Now, if you want to see more of my unboxing and review videos, just check out this playlist right here. And if you want to see more care and husbandry videos, just check out this playlist right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>